Alright, this is going to be an exciting one, because this is going to be me getting angry, I guess. I don't know. I don't know whether it's me getting angry, but it's certainly me getting opinionated. So, basically, I just wanted to add my two cents on a kind of an argument, I guess, has been going around for a while now. I actually saw this mentioned in a really old video on Cassie Tastic's channel from, like, 2011, in the early days of BookTube. But it's also been in discussion videos recently, either mentioned in passing. I know, for example, Steve Donahue and Plots and Points have both done videos recently talking about reviews and, you know, the, re the relationship between reviewers and publishers. And today I just want to talk about that a bit more and share my two thoughts, really. So I don't want to paraphrase too much from what other people have said. So if you haven't checked the other videos and you do want to check them out, I'll link them below. But basically, I think what Steve and James were both talking about is that when everybody on BookTube, and particularly the larger channels, they're all picking up the same books because this video is sponsored by, you know, Penguin or whoever it is, and they're all picking up the same new releases, and they're doing, uh, you know, paid reviews and paid placements and stuff, it becomes almost impossible to actually tell when you can trust somebody. To a certain extent, I do agree with that. Personally, I would never take payment for a review. I would accept a book for free and maybe review it if that makes sense. I mean a pretty good way to get into my book haul video at least is to send me a book. It will make it in the haul even if I don't read the book. So you know and people don't necessarily pay for that they might send me a free book uh, and then that mixes in with the books I buy myself and for me I think that works. When I do accept a book for review I won't necessarily be nice about it. I'll be, I will give it my honest review. From my point of view, it really doesn't matter where I get books from. Sometimes I get sent them for free. Sometimes I buy them from charity shops. Sometimes I pay full price, very rarely. <laughs> you know, my, my thoughts on the books will always be my thoughts on the books. And, you know, I try and do reviews probably more often than other people do. One thing I did wonder is whether the reason that reviews are kind of not as popular as other videos on BookTube is because people just don't trust reviewers anymore because so many of these reviews are sponsored or whatever, you know. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt when they've, re re you know, received a book for free. Most times, actually, when I've, for example, I've worked on clients where I used to work in marketing, so I've read a client's book and... You know, even though it's a client, I I have my opinions on how good the book is. And you send it out to people and you start seeing the reviews. And they generally do, you know, I'd, people don't often pull punches. At least, I think on blogs more than on BookTube. Maybe on BookTube they do. I mean, I do tend to give books that I review on BookTube a pretty high rating. You know, 2 or out of 5 or 2.5 out of 5 or above really. But that's because if a book is so bad that I'd give it 1 out of 5, I'd tend to not finish the book. And I don't feel comfortable reviewing a book unless I've read the whole thing. So, you know, the worst book in the world, you know, I'd get five pages in and just be like, no, I'm not doing this. So it just wouldn't get a review. So you kind of don't see those lower end scores. But I will give twos and threes and that kind of stuff. I will be honest if I see things in a book that I don't like. You know, I I, I don't know. I, I will criticise away. And, I, and this brings me on to the next point of the discussion, really. Which is that some people say that if you want to be a writer, you should only post positive reviews because negative reviews aren't helping anybody. It's going to shut doors and all this and all that. You know, people aren't going to want to work with you. And for me, that idea is just laughable because the publishing industry anyway, although it's small, everyone knows each other, it's also huge, everyone doesn't know each other, especially when you get into things like indie publishing and that sort of thing. And... The idea of brown tonguing somebody <laughs> to get my book published is the worst possible thing I can imagine. I would rather, you know, I would rather tell the truth and never be published than to give out five star reviews for crappy books because I want to be in the in crowd, you know. You know how everyone's raving about Zenith at the moment and I'm not going to say anything bad about Zenith because I haven't read it and I have no intention of reading it. If I did read it, I'd give it an honest review. I probably will pick it up in five years and it'll probably be just like, eh, alright, a lot of books are. So for me, as an author and as an indie author, personally I appreciate negative reviews as much as positive reviews as long as there's some some element of criticism in you know and I think even while it can be infuriating the most infuriating review I've ever had was a three star review where somebody gave it three stars and was like haven't read it yet but I want to and I'm like thank you you just pulled the average rating of my book down even though you want to read it that's just weird 
But like, say I get a two star review and they say, okay, well, I didn't think the characterization was great. I thought, you know, this part of the plot could have been resolved better. I've just watched a review of Kit Kats Can Read where she reviewed Driven, which is my book, which I sent to her. And she was like, well, I did find this one part where, <laughs> where, um, the wrong word was used, which she did. She sent it to me. I fixed it. And she was like, and there was a point near the middle where, you know, it seemed to slow down a little bit. And she had some thoughts on the different characters and even like who they reminded her of and stuff. And I'm like, I actually really appreciate it. You know, you take the negatives with the positives. But say you have a one or a two star review, as long as there's something you can learn from it, for me as an author, I'm happy with that. And the idea of it closing doors if you give a negative review is just madness to me like it does remind me I've given negative reviews to indie authors in the past and they've then gone through to my books and left negative re reviews on my books without reading them which is it which is annoying but I guess you can expect that to a certain extent from indie authors I mean I think it's a level of un unprofessionalism really and then that my other thing as well we which is like if I criticise a book, it's because I didn't like it, so I'm not I'm not going to want to work with those people. <laughs> like, for example, they the exam I think the example somebody gave in one of their videos was like, oh well, if you give a bad review to a book, then the editor of that book's never going to want to work with you. And I'm like, well, I don't want to work with the editor because that was a bad book. They should have edited it better. <laughs> like, it just it just seems it just seems weird to me that you would have that mentality that you're gonna. You're gonna not like something and then suddenly you're not gonna be able to work with that person whose work you didn't like And equally as well I think every writer especially every professional writer realizes that you don't always get Positive reviews and like for example I've I've released I think seven books now and there is like a select crowd of people who will read each of the books as I release them The fuck just a kid on a bike doing a, a wheelie outside as he ro rode up the hill for some reason, but you know, so the people who've read my books and who've read multiple books by me, they like some books more than others, you know. They don't just go, oh, this one was great, this one was great, this one was great. They, You just don't do that as a reader. Stephen King, for example, one of my favourite authors, and I reviewed recently the last two books in his Bill Hodges trilogy, and I really liked the first one, Mr. Mercedes. And then Finders Keepers, I felt, would could have just been a standalone with different characters. And it also felt like it could have been written by anyone. And then for the third book, End of Watch, my main problem there was that it started as this hard-boiled detective thing. And then suddenly there are these all psychic elements and, um, you know, brainwashing and all this stuff. Which I didn't really feel f fit with the ethos that the original book laid out. But for me as well, that's per A, that's personal preference. B, that's constructive criticism. And st C, like, he's still my favourite author. Just because I gave one of his books a three stars or whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't change that fact. And I can't see somebody like Stephen King even caring. Who's going to care? Even if you're the biggest booktubers, like you're Emma Books or whatever. If Emma Books, well, she's probably not the biggest. The biggest one's probably Christine, isn't it, from Pole and Bananas. And imagine she gave Stephen King a two-star review. He's probably not even going to notice. The only people who will notice if she gives a two-star review would be the people that, you know, that, again, that are in the booktuber inner circle. You know, your Cassandra Clares and your Holly Blacks and your Pierce Browns. He's everywhere at the moment. And all this other stuff, like your Sasha Augsburg, or is, I think that's her name, isn't it? Like, if she, if, if she gives a two-star to review to one of those, they're going to notice. But if she gives a two-star review to anybody else, they're not going to care. <laughs> like, I think, just to be honest, I mean, I would rather be known for my integrity. I, I think people will res respect that more. I think readers will respect that more. I think reviewers will respect that more. I think I'd respect it more in myself, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, I think BookTube and publishing are different because publishing, the publishing industry is all about making money. <laughs> it's sad but true at the end of the day and that's why it's so hard to actually make it as a professional author you know and as much as I would love to make a living from my books whether that'll happen or not I mean I'm not gonna start writing differently because uh, YA is more marketable or whatever I'm gonna write what I want to write and what I as a reader would want to read and if it gets picked up it gets picked up and I, th I think especially the kind of stuff that I write integrity is very important you know I 
I think, I, you know, I, I actually think it works in my favour when I'm working with smaller presses in particular. You know, I think a lot of the bigger presses, they're not even going to look at me unless I get an agent. And if I, I'm not going to get an agent unless I've got an online following. And I'm not going to get an online following unless I sit here and rant about stuff on BookTube. There is a weird sort of symbiotic and also parasitic relationship between publishers and authors and reviewers. But I do think it's possible to be both. And I think... If you're saying that as an author you can only post positive reviews of other books, I don't know. It just seems to me as though you're not very mature as an author. Like you haven't, you haven't gotten to know. Like it's it is it's the it's like today's new generation. I think the you know the cotton wool generation where you know where people sort of almost feel as though they're right to not be offended trumps somebody else's right to free speech no that's not how it works <laughs> like you don't have a right to not be offended and if you think oh well i need to pull my punches in case i upset somebody with a review that i post then all i can say is you're not a very good reviewer like that's the whole point of reviews is it is it, you're gonna put some people off some people aren't gonna like you anyway i think i'm gonna leave this discussion now because i don't know if this has made any sense but anyway i would love to know your thoughts so where do you stand on the line between sort of publishers and reviewers do you think authors should review other books and if so do you think they should give negative reviews yeah and do you think that leaving negative reviews will close doors and if so would you want to work with somebody who did that to people? Because I don't even know if I'd want to work with a publisher that did that to other authors, let alone one that was doing it to me or to somebody that I knew. I think if you're worried that people are going to react badly and not publish you or not be friends with you because of your opinions, I think that shows a startling lack of belief in your own opinions and your own ability as an author. Mic drop. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video because it's entirely possible this is going to get some dislikes and I'm going to need you guys to help me redress the balance. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.